Alone, friendless, and obese, Yu attends Zhou's fortune shift as he discovers a cheat code world within the real one. The story begins with Yuya Tenjo, an overweight Japanese high schooler. Yuya has constantly been mocked for his weight, even by his own family consisting of his mother, father and two siblings, a brother and sister who are a year younger than him. Known for their beauty and attractive features, the family deems Yuya unworthy of being considered a proper member. The only person ever kind to Yuya was his grandfather who passed away, leaving everything including a house to Yuya. Yuya's family disowned him after that incident and he now lives alone. Things are no different for Yuya at school. He's routinely mocked for his obesity by classmates who scrawl graffiti on his house door and force him to take off his clothes and laugh at him. His life is full of misery, and he's depressed and hopeless. One day, as Yuya is walking somewhere, he hears some distressed voices and decides to investigate. He sees a group of three thugs harassing a girl who's clearly very uncomfortable and begging them to leave her alone. Plucking up his courage, Yuya asks them to stop, but they only laugh at him. They team up and beat Yuya into a bloodied mess, but the police arrive and the thugs flee. Yuya gets up and the girl tries to thank him, but Yuya, being compassionate, brushes it off, saying that he's used to getting hurt. The following day, Yuya walks to school where the 61st graduation ceremony is being conducted with great zeal. Yuya then sees the three thugs who were harassing the girl yesterday. They recognize poor Yuya and beat and detain him. Yuya begs to be released as he would lose his job as a newspaper delivery boy, but they don't relent and mock him until late afternoon with a cheering mob egging them on. Yuya somehow reaches his workplace but is promptly fired. Dejected, he eats a small cup of instant noodles which is all he can afford. He then goes to the bathroom. Frustrated, he punches the mirror, shattering it. Yuya lashes out again, but this time, the wall moves and a gaping hole is left before Yuya. The boy is curious and starts to investigate. He squeezes in and sees different strange artifacts, but thinks that there are souvenirs from his grandfather's travels around the world. Going further, he sees a mysterious door and decides to open it. He enters and finds himself in a wooden cabin. A strange screen appears in front of him, and several others follow. Looking at the screens, Yuya learns that there are different statistics for a person such as agility, magic, intelligence, and bonus points, and all of this are at one the minimum. After some research, Yuya concludes that he's in another world and discovers a document announcing that he has inherited this house, which is only open to him and is protected by a magic barrier. Yuya ventures outside after discovering several weapons like a sword and spear and is initially unable to use any because of his low statistics. Yuya then observed as a barrier is attacked by a red ogre, a monster of high level. Yuya is initially hesitant, but after some training, he slays the beast, acquiring 1000 points each for his statistics. Tired, Yuya decides to head back and rest after a while. Just then, a wad of cash appears before him and Yuya correctly surmises it as a reward for slaying the monster. As Yuya goes to sleep that night, his body is racked with pain and he passes a miserable night. However, when he wakes up the following day, he's stunned to see six-pack abs instead of his big belly. His clothes are too big and this drastic change occurs overnight. Yuya doesn't think much of it though and continues to visit the other world. On subsequent visits, Yuya learns more and more about the world he's in. His cabin is surrounded by a lush green forest and is protected by the magical barrier. Yuya discovers that there is a vegetable garden and decides to tend it. He learns that the vegetables are very good to eat and later realizes that eating produce boosts his stats. Yuya works hard on training and builds up his statistics more and more. He calmly slays a new monster and acquires a unique necklace which nets him 150 points. After some time, Yuya decides to return to school being free of financial worries for the time being. He enters the school but is not recognized by anyone, not even his own kin. Nobody believes Yuya when he tells them his name. He's a bit nervous when he sees his former bullies approach him but is surprised when they refuse to recognize him. Worried, Yuya rushes to the bathroom and looks at his reflection and lets out an exclamation. Yuya, still in disbelief over his transformation, is accosted by his siblings. The three thugs had peed him and taken to the place where he was bullied earlier, and they pelt him with questions. Yuya is trying to evade their questions. Just then, a car stops and a girl emerges from the vehicle and asks for Yuya Tenjo. Yuya speaks up and the girl introduces herself as Kari Hujo and thanks him profusely for saving her. At first, Yuya doesn't recognize her. 
but later does and accepts her gratitude. She apologizes for investigating his profile to track him down. As a token of her gratitude, Kaori Hoju offers Yuya Tenjo a place in the Usha Academy, regarded as the most elite academy in town. Yuya doesn't think that he would be able to get enrolled as his grades are not exceptional. His younger siblings, being jealous, corroborate Yuga's statement and quickly ask Kaori to secure admissions for them instead. She denies their demands and points out their unacceptable behavior with Yuya, which she has seen during her investigation. As the daughter of the chairman of Usha Academy, she firmly states that values, not grades, are a criteria for getting into the academy. Karori's butler suggests heading to the institute to give Yuya some time to mull the offer, and Yuya agrees. Once there, Yuya is taken to Tsukasa Hojo, the chairman of Usha Academy and Kaori's father, who thanks Yuya for saving his daughter. Yuya downplays it and says that it wasn't a big deal which Kaori denies vehemently, saying no one else helped her that day. The chairman wants Yuya to be enrolled in his academy, but Yuya is conflicted about whether he should join as he believes that the institute is for brilliant people, but the chairman asks him to reconsider. Yuya is reminded of his grandfather as he looks at the chairman and decides to take trial classes for a day. Just then, Miss Iwata, a renowned scientist and Usha's Academy's science teacher, knocks on the door and Yuya is spirited away for his first class. Waiting outside the course to be introduced, Yuya feels very nervous. When Miss Zawada calls him in, everyone is stunned by how handsome he is, which makes Yuya a bit embarrassed. Yuya ends up enjoying the lecture and at the end, everyone gathers around him asking him different questions. Ryu Igarashi, a classmate, sends all of them away pointing out how uncomfortable Yuya is and apologizes on their behalf. He offers to take Yuya to the cafe. Relieved, Yuya accepts gratefully. At the cafe, Yuya is stunned by how good the eatery is and the prices for all the different food options are fixed at only 500 yen. Ryu points out the free daily special, which amazes Yuga even more. Ryu then introduces his friend Shingo Kurata, during lunch, Yuya feels like everyone is staring and thinks that it might be because of his uniform, but Ryu simply states that the reason is Yuga's handsomeness. Ryu and Shingo start talking and Yuya is surprised to learn they both watch anime. After a bit more conversation, Yuga learns that Yuga is in almost every club. Clubs are student bodies for activities and Ryu, a member of the gaming club, reveals that he carries a console around which further amazes Yuga. After a full day's worth of activities, Yuga meets the chairman again and accepts the admission offer with a full fee concession. He leaves the campus and meets Kaori on his way out. They strike up a conversation and Kaori reveals that, being the chairman's daughter, she's avoided and lonely and has no friends at all. Yuga feels sympathetic towards her and the two go on a walk, which turns into a date as people all around them start to compliment them as a couple. Yuga and Kaori share a dessert and a tender moment. Once home, Yuga cannot help but feel amazed at the change in his fortune as he has gone from rags to riches in every sense of the expression. He decides to enter the other world by means of the door again. He continues his training with great enthusiasm and his level is shown to have reached about 239 from the starting point of level 1. Feeling adventurous, Yuga decides to venture outside the magical barrier around the house and manages to do so. Just then, he hears clamoring and investigates. He finds many dead bodies on the ground and a level 200 monster jeering at a female fighter who has been injured. Taking cover behind a tree, Yuga launches his spear at the beast but is quickly slapped away and the beast triumphantly mocks Yuga. Undeterred, Yuga then uses a combination of lethal attacks with a sword and melee attacks and finally takes down the monster. Some people arrive at the battlefield and the episode ends as Yuga disappears through some means and avoids another potential confrontation. If you enjoyed watching this recap, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button to get priority notifications when new episodes air. See you in the next episode with another recap.